This is a complicated tale about Leonard Shelby, fellow Pierce, a man whose capacity to gain new experiences is harmed when he is struck in the head while defying two individuals who are going after his significant other, Georgia Fox, at their home around midnight. He kills one of the assailants during the assault and one of the last things Leonard recollects is his significant other biting the dust. He dedicates his life to finding and killing the subsequent aggressor. The film shifts back and forth among variety and highly contrasting successions. The highly contrasting groupings continue in sequential request, while the variety arrangements continue backward ordered request. The forward high contrast scenes and the opposite variety scenes substitute until they compromise of the story toward the finish of the film. In the two circle set of movies, the subsequent plate contains the film in sequential request. To play this adaptation of the film, 1. Select the clock symbol, 2. Select the response C to each different decision question, and 3. Organize the tire changing strides backward sequential request, 3412. The film starts to play with the credits first, dash and reverse request. A few capabilities, quick forward, part skip, and so forth, are handicapped. This summary depicts the scenes in sequential request. It isn't the plot request introduced in the film. The story begins clearly. Leonard Shelby awakens in a room at the Markdown Motel bewildered concerning why he is there. The telephone rings and he talks with an obscure guest. He tells the guest that he experiences anaerograde amnesia, a condition which makes him incapable to make new recollections. He depicts the condition by enumerating the tale of Sammy Jankies, Stephen Tobolowsky, who had a similar issue. Leonard depicts how one high priority an arrangement of notes to manage the issues and a drive to utilize them. Leonard says he has the drive that Sammy never had and the watcher sees Leonard's tattoo, John G assaulted and killed my better half as well as different signs and notes inked on his body. Leonard proceeds with the story and makes sense of that he had recently turned into an insurance agent when he met Sammy and was relegated to decide if his condition was covered by his protection contract. Sammy's condition disliked different instances of anaerograde amnesia and that Sammy couldn't learn through molding. After extra testing, Leonard says he inferred that Sammy's condition was mental and the case was denied on the grounds that Sammy was not covered for psychological instability. Leonard makes sense of how Mrs. Jankies, Harriet Sansom Harris, met secretly with him. In attempting to assuage her, Leonard told her that Sammy ought to have the option to gain new experiences. She tried Sammy's memory by over and over requesting that he give her insulin infusions. She slipped by into a state of insensibility and never recuperated from the excess. Sammy was then bound to a psychological foundation. During this discussion, the guest and Leonard discuss Leonard's journey and the way that the police didn't trust the tale about the subsequent assailant. The guest distinguishes himself as a cop and gives Leonard extra pieces of information for his mission. Leonard tattoos the reality the subsequent aggressor was a street pharmacist. The guest distinguishes the subsequent assailant as Jimmy Grants and lets Leonard know that he has set up a gathering with Jimmy. Leonard consents to meet the guest in the inn entryway. In the hall, Leonard meets a man, Joe Pantoliano, and inquires as to whether he is official gamble. The man demands that Leonard ought to call him Teddy since he is secret. Teddy gives Leonard headings to the gathering area and Leonard goes to meet Jimmy at a neglected structure beyond town. At the point when Jimmy Grants, Larry Holden, shows up, he perceives Leonard as the man with the memory condition, requests to understand what Leonard is doing there, and asks where Teddy is. Leonard undermines Jimmy with a tire iron and advises him to strip. Jimmy argues for his life and lets Leonard know that there is $200,000 in the storage compartment of his vehicle for installment of the medications that Teddy was to have brought to the gathering. Leonard chokes Jimmy, takes a Polaroid photograph of his body, and starts getting into Jimmy's garments. As the photograph of Jimmy's body creates, the film step by step goes from high contrast into variety. The excess story is in variety, however continues in the film backward request. As Leonard hauls Jimmy into the storm cellar, he hears Jimmy murmur Sammy. Prior to passing on. That's what Leonard infers assuming Jimmy had some awareness of Sammy, he was not the subsequent aggressor. Teddy shows up at the scene and attempts to persuade Leonard that Jimmy was the man he was later. Leonard doesn't trust him. Teddy at long last concedes that Jimmy Grants was a street pharmacist who had nothing to do with his better half's killing. Teddy then lets Leonard know that his better half endured the assault. As indicated by Teddy, Sammy Jankies was a misrepresentation who was not even hitched and it was Leonard's better half who was diabetic. Teddy professes to be the cop who explored his significant other's homicide. 
He says he accepted him about the subsequent aggressor and aided him track down and kill the genuine John G over a year prior. Teddy guarantees that he snapped a photo of a blissful Leonard just after the subsequent aggressor was dead. Leonard failed to remember the killing and started looking for the dead John G once more. Teddy lets Leonard know there are a lot of John G's to find and concedes that he is even a John G. His complete name is John Edward Gamel and his mom calls him Teddy. Before Lenny can neglect Teddy's disclosures, he chooses to proceed with the chase, misleading himself to get himself in a position to kill Teddy. He puts a note on Teddy's photograph saying don't really accept that as untruths, records Teddy's tag number as John G's, and passes on himself a suggestion to get a tattoo of the plate number, SG-137U. Leonard ditches Teddy by tossing Teddy's vehicle keys into certain weeds. Leonard then, at that point, leaves his pickup truck at the treatment facility and drives away in Jimmy's Puma, actually wearing Jimmy's garments. Subsequent to neglecting Teddy's disclosures and the misleads himself, Leonard tracks down a tattoo parlor and has the tag number tattooed onto his leg. Teddy sees the Puma left outside and comes in, attempting to move the vehicle and get Lenny to escape town in some new garments. Leonard sees the note on the rear of Teddy's photos and chooses to leave without him. Leonard finds a note in the pocket of Jimmy's suit coat, which he is wearing. The note is from a Natalie advising Jimmy to come to Ferdy's bar. Not understanding he is wearing Jimmy's garments and driving Jimmy's vehicle, Leonard thinks the note is for himself and goes to meet Natalie, Carrie Ann Greenery. He enlightens her regarding his condition. Natalie trusts his story after a test. Natalie brings Leonard to her back home and lets him know he can remain with her. Leonard relates what he recollects of the assault. He says he stirred to sounds, got a weapon, and found his significant other being choked. Leonard shot one interloper, however a subsequent man clubbed him with a sap and crushed his head into a mirror. He proceeds to make sense of that the police didn't completely accept that there was a subsequent aggressor. Leonard lets Natalie know that the subsequent aggressor was too shrewd and passed on the proof to appear as though there was just a single interloper. Natalie fools Leonard into pursuing a man named Dodd, Callum Keith Rennie, who she guarantees has been irritating her for the cash from Jimmy's earlier medication bargains. Leonard passes on to search for Dodd. Teddy is sitting tight for him as he leaves Natalie's home. Teddy attempts to caution Leonard about Natalie, yet at the same in the wake of seeing the don't completely accept that his untruths note on Teddy's image, Leonard doesn't trust him. Leonard concludes he shouldn't remain with Natalie and heeds Teddy's guidance to go to the rebate hotel. Leonard goes to the Markdown Motel. However Leonard has previously paid for a room, Bert, imprint Boone Jr., at the front work area exploits his condition by leasing him a subsequent room. Leonard calls an escort administration. At the point when the escort shows up, Leonard clarifies for her that he needs just to remember nodding off the evening of the assault. Subsequent to nodding off, the escort wakes him. He requests that the escort leave. He then, at that point, takes individual things having a place with his significant other to a supply and consumes them. Toward the beginning of the day, Leonard leaves the repository and is spotted by Dodd. Leonard gets away from Dodd and goes to Dodd's in to hang tight for him. At the point when Dodd gets back to his in-room, Leonard thrashes him and ties him. Leonard calls Teddy for assist in managing Dodd. Teddy comes to Dodd's in-room. Leonard and Teddy persuade Dodd to leave town. Giving back in kind of disposing of Dodd, Leonard goes through the night at Natalie's. In the first part of the day she consents to follow the tag number tattooed on Leonard's leg. Sometime thereafter, Natalie gives him the data alongside bearings to an unwanted spot beyond town where a person she knew used to do greater arrangements. Leonard returns it to his inn. At the inn, Leonard assembles the hints and reasons that Teddy is John Edward Gamble and should be the subsequent assailant. He calls Teddy and they go to a similar deserted building where Jimmy Grants was killed a couple of days sooner. Leonard shoots Teddy in the head. 